Uh, I'm, I'm normally pretty soft-spoken, but on stage I do my presenter voice. And so I think the, uh, the AV people always assume I'll be whispering. Uh, so I know I'm the one who is holding you back from the beer and the wine, so I'll try not to uh, hold you from that too much. So my name is uh, Ray Camden. I work for IBM, so pretend that I'm wearing a tie somewhere underneath there. And apparently uh, my job is to do cat demos in Node.js. Uh, I keep thinking someone from corporate is going to write me and say, you know, you should be more serious and do enterprise Node.js stuff. And I'd be fine with that as long as it's enterprise cats. I'm just saying. Uh, so I tweet at Raymond Camden, and my blog is at RaymondCamden.com. Please follow me on Twitter because my entire self-worth is based on my follower count. So for fun, like you all follow me today, and then tomorrow this all unfollow because I'll be up and then down. Okay. I think that'd be fun. Uh, so I want to talk about programming, not just any programming, but great programming. And to be clear, I'm not talking about what you're actually producing, because let's be honest, most of us aren't really working on really stupendous stuff. Uh, my first commercial job in programming was Perl CGI scripts to process form input. And I've been processing form input for the web for 20 years, pretty much. I'm still doing that. No, uh, as an example of some great programming, this is Miss uh, Catherine Johnson. And her and her coworkers actually helped get us into space with their brains. These were human computers back when the word meant uh, people who did computations in their head. So while we're struggling with tabs versus spaces or whether to include a semicolon or not, they were worried about trajectory of reentry and wind resistance and stuff like that. To give you an idea of how crucial she and her coworkers were, uh, when, a mechanical, uh, when a mechanical computer was used to compute something, Buzz Aldrin actually asked her to check the computer's results. So that's badass. <laughs> that's true great programming. And it's a true shame that uh, I had never heard of her and her coworkers. Uh, my image of NASA behind the scenes was white guys with crew cuts and mission control. I had never heard of these people. And there's actually a movie coming out pretty soon called Hidden Figures, which looks awesome. Like, this should be the story of NASA, or definitely more of a part of the story. Good news is that none of us are doing this. <laughs> Nothing even close to this level. As a great example, uh, one of the issues they were having is, you know, NASA wanted the astronaut to land at a certain point, and they weren't sure how to do that. And she literally said, just tell me where you want the astronaut. I'll figure it out. That's hardcore. Uh, talking more about programming that makes you feel great. So I have been around for a very, 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 very long time. I've worked with a lot of different languages. And what I found is that pretty much every language allows you to get stuff done. You could do whatever you want in any language out there. But there are certain languages, certain platforms that are just a heck of a lot more fun to use, a heck of a lot more inviting, and just encourage you to actually go out and build stuff. I think that's a good thing. I'm going to take you on a journey back. Uh, I said it was pretty old. Uh, this is actually where I grew up. It kind of freaks me out that I can go online and find a picture of my home and where I grew up. There's actually a basement down there where I was a badass programmer as a young kid. Uh, in terms of how this started, my mom's employer, this was late 70s, uh, forward thinking, gave her a computer, the Apple IIe. And the idea was for my mother, <laughs> to learn how to use a computer. And for some reason, uh, they also gave her a giant box of games. I don't know what in the hell they were thinking <laughs> when they did this, what they expected to happen, because I took that thing over immediately and essentially learned enough to put a floppy in and, and play around. And by the way, you come see me later, I'll tell you why the Infogom game, A Mind Forever Voyaging, is the best game ever created. Uh, but that's a whole different discussion over beer. So I was playing one particular game, Bard's Tale. Uh, this was a kind of a classic RPG. Uh, if you've never played an RPG, that's great. <laughs> uh, don't start. 
Uh, but most of these games are very number-based, so you are a character of a certain level and you have stats and all that. And I was playing it, and uh, this was back when you did mapping by drawing on graph paper, none of that fancy auto-map stuff going on. And it was a hard game, and I'd gotten stuck, and I naturally thought, well, how about if I try to cheat? So I found a hex editor and actually went in and found my characters and edited the data to make myself super powerful. Learned enough hex to know that FF, 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 one more time, would probably make me a little bit powerful. Uh, and I kind of assumed that I would never use hex again. Surprise, surprise, web colors. I never would have guessed that at all. But that, that wasn't programming at all. That was just editing. Certainly kind of put the bug in my head. Uh, but it was actually a movie that got me into programming. And it wasn't that movie, uh, although I've certainly been impacted. That's actually me last month uh, at the last Star Wars Rogue trailer that, that came out. Uh, I am definitely, definitely <laughs> too much of a Star Wars nerd. Uh, I've tried really hard to get my kids into it. And so far, only my two youngest girls have gotten into it. Uh, and it's really, really cool to hear them playing in the back, and they'll start singing the Imperial March, which you can do. They, they've shown me that you can actually sing that song. Uh, it's really, really kind of cool. No, it was another movie uh, that came out when I was a wee lad. Just That's me, less hairy. Uh, another movie came out in uh, 1983, and hopefully you may recognize it. If not, this is Tron, and the basic idea was that a programmer goes into the computer and discovers that all his programs and stuff take on a life of their own. Now remember, nine, ten years old, I don't know what programming is. And then I see this. And apparently, this is what programming is. This is Blue Leader to How in the hell could I not do anything else besides this? So obviously, that's what programming is all about. So I, <laughs> yeah, that's what I really thought I was going to do. So I had the Apple IIe, and one of the cool things about this, and like all older machines, I didn't really recognize it until I was preparing for this keynote, is that turning the machine on, you could actually write code. Like, done. Like, you didn't need an editor. You weren't in, uh, NPM installing PHP or whatever. No, you could just turn the darn thing on and start writing code which is kind of cool. So I got my little AppleSoft basic book, and I wrote my first program. And shockingly, it didn't work. Now, mind you, I'm like 10 years old. I didn't know that could happen, right? Wait, I could write a program? It didn't work? That, that's not supposed to happen. So I looked at the, at the docs, and I read it. I'm like, yeah, yeah, that, that kind of makes sense. And I looked closer, and it's still not working. And something went wrong, and I'm going to... You're never supposed to like code during a keynote. This is all talking, right? I actually have an Apple II emulator, and I'm going to show you what I did. All right, I'm going to put this down for one second. All right. So, real simple, right? Basic. Pin, print, hello. And I wanted to make it match what I saw, right? Yeah, so, uh, play. I looked again. Oh, yeah, I'm supposed to hit the return key. Luckily, that's the last bug I made, and I've closely read the docs ever since then. It's not been a problem. Uh, but, yeah, little did I know at the time that that was my entire career would be banging my head against really, really dumb mistakes like that. Uh, I've made much worse mistakes since then, so that, that's okay. So I went out. Uh, back then, you would get a magazine called Family Computing. I'd go to my library. I'd run there. Uh, I'd shoot past all the boring reviews and stuff in, in the front and go to the back where they had programs that you would actually type in by hand for fun and hope that nothing went wrong. And you would also hope that there were no bugs in the program because uh, corrections would appear like two months later. <laughs> Yeah, you talk about, you know, uh, filing a bug request on GitHub. This was a little bit slower. 
And uh, you know how, like, when before, like, the MacBooks came out and Apple really wasn't as popular amongst coders, it was very common for some new cool program to come out and it was Windows only. And you'd say, oh, crap, well, that's just a thing. So, like, back then they also had computers that were popular and some that weren't. And so you could do stuff like send a self-addressed stamped, uh, stamped envelope to get a copy for your platform of choice. Uh, I'm actually tempted to mail this person and just to see <laughs> what they send back. Uh, it'd be kind of cool to actually send them back. Uh, kind of related to this, uh, there was a, a game uh, columnist, a computer game columnist called Scorpia. And she was in some magazine, but you could send her a letter if you were stuck in a game. And like six to eight weeks later, <laughs> she would actually write you back and say, yeah, just do X. And you're like, oh, now I can keep playing again. Uh, so the, things are a little bit easier now. So I did a lot of programming like that. I used the heck out of that Apple IIe. Uh, went to college, right? Because I'm going to be a badass programmer and either do Tron video games or another influential movie. I was going to be, you know, work for the government and be like the super cool hacker doing uh, nuclear war simulations because that's obviously what they must do. And I had a kind of a rude awakening when I discovered, yeah, so computer science is stuff like when you sort, this one has a performance vector of n to the o something. Yes, that's literally pretty much all I remember of my computer science classes. I also discovered something else. Uh, who here was good at math in high school? A lot, yeah, not, not surprisingly. Who here discovered that good at math means shit? <laughs> pardon, uh, pardon the language, yes. So there's like good at math, uh, kind of like, like being good in a, a first-person shooter video game, and then there's actually like being in real combat. Not the same. For me, the real combat was Calculus 3, where like everything up to that point was like a big joke. And like, oh, guess what? Here's real math. And my brain just said, no, no, please don't hurt me anymore. Uh, so I retreated <laughs> into uh, becoming an English major, uh, which actually helped me out, uh, technical writing. And I pretty much was assuming I would not have a career in anything that involves computers when all of a sudden the web came out. And something else that was good about this that relates very much to what I discovered uh, working with my Apple is that it was also extremely easy to use. So again, you didn't need a platform. You didn't need a particular editor. Uh, for me, on Unix, I used ED because VI was too complex. I saw one person give me a thumbs up. ED was simple. It's, it's awesome. Uh, but you could use anything you wanted to. You could use Notepad on Windows. Uh, anything just worked, and this was actually kind of awesome because it meant that people could create anything. You didn't need a comp sci background. Uh, you didn't need formal training. You didn't need anything at all. And the results were awesome. <laughs> now, most people show this as an example of like, oh, this is horrible. This is bad. I kind of look at this and I think this is what you build when you don't know what you shouldn't do. And that's not always a terrible thing. Uh, there's a lot of kind of like emotional baggage that we get as we grow up that says, oh, you shouldn't do this and you shouldn't do that. Uh, you shouldn't code this certain way. And then there's this people who just say, you know, what? I'm just going to go ahead and put every color on the web page because why not? Computers support millions of colors. Why can't my web page support millions of colors too? It's kind of like when you're a child and no one has told you what makes sense. No one has told you what not to do. My wife and I were just kind of sitting in the living room one day when uh, my two youngest just walked out and were extremely proud of what they had worn. They weren't dressing up for fun. They were dressing up to be cool. And I love that attitude. That is exactly the attitude I wish I had more of. Uh, not that I would dress like that, but uh, <laughs> uh, it won't be long before they dress better than I do already. They already dance better than me, which is sad. So. I switched to the web. It was very inviting. It was very easy. Uh, it was very scalable in terms of being able to learn and build cool stuff. Spent a lot of years working on the web. Uh, a lot of years was really good. A lot of years weren't <laughs> quite as good. Uh, I did actually re uh, retreat 
re retreat quite a bit to the server side where you didn't have to worry about what browsers did and just you know spit stuff out, let the other people do the HTML. Uh, but we've actually entered a great time now where all of our browsers are actually really darn good, sometimes even Safari. Uh, they iterate very quickly. You can actually hear people kind of talking about stuff like service workers and actually see them show up. Uh, when I first started, you got a new browser once a year and you got what you were given and you were happy for it. So Netscape gave us a layer tag. All right, I'll take it and I'll do my best to run with it because that's what I was given. Uh, so our situation now is a heck of a lot better. Uh, I had really like retreated to server side for a long time just because I didn't want to deal with the mess. And over the last five years or so, I've come back and it's a, a lot nicer now to work on the web, to work with JavaScript especially. Uh, I still suck at CSS. I'm hopefully not the only one here who sucks at CSS. Everyone can vertically align center stuff in CSS. Tables, tables worked. Uh, I, mi I missed the uh, center tag too. Uh, so uh, I did ask permission if I could sh talk about Cordova here, make sure it's all right. Uh, a couple years ago, a, a project was launched to allow you to take your web skills and deploy them on mobile. Uh, and to me, again, this was great because I did not know native programming. Uh, I had respect for Java. I had respect for Objective-C. Uh, but kind of going back to what I said, there are some platforms that are very inviting and some that are not. I think Objective-C is a great, uh, very complex, powerful language that I do not want to ever use again in my life. Uh, versus working with the web and working on the mobile, uh, working on the web via mobile is something that I absolutely do want to do again. So I did spend a lot of time uh, building various kitten-based Cordova apps. Here's one, here's two, here's three, and here's a cat quoting uh, Conan the Barbarian because that makes sense to me. Uh, I do get paid to do this, believe it or not. I'm very happy. And bringing it back to NativeScript, it's a lot of the same things. I love the fact that NativeScript is easy to pick up. I love the fact that I'm able to reuse my JavaScript knowledge. It is an inviting technology. I'm selling to the already sold to, et cetera. But uh, it's a similar feeling of I want to go out and just build stuff with it. I want to you know, create stuff. Unfortunately, I only have one cat demo. And I feel really kind of bad about that. So when I was sitting in the back there, I actually built a second cat demo <laughs> that where you click and it does a random cat because why not? <laughs> And this is totally lame and stupid, but the fact that the technology allows me to just build stupid crap for fun is something that I think is a huge win for any platform. And I'll be selling this for $2.99 on the iOS store. <laughs> you know, I probably would sell. That's kind of sad. <laughs> I'll add some in-app purchases to add uh, puppies or something. So just to kind of like wrap things up and to allow you to get to the beer and wine, uh, I'm a big, big fan of looking for technology that allows you to be creative, uh, that has a low barrier to entry. Don't ask if anything kind of makes sense. Just kind of go out and build stupid crap. And in, in general, just live like this. Just do it and have fun. Thank you.